get it around. I mean, come on. Okay, there are a lot of women are emotionally strong, men are emotionally weak. Men are physically strong, women are physically weak. Now, uh, how many of you know how to drive? How good were you when you drove for the first time? कितनी बार गाड़ी को ठोका? कभी कभी गाड़ी कंट्रोल से बाहर गई? क्या यार? गाड़ी कंट्रोल से You're not born a driver. You're not. You have to pick up your skills and you have to wire your brain in a certain way that you will not be able to sleep in the night. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing but you can drive. You won't drive in the most efficient way but you can drive. You can at least drive those car games, steering wheel. Okay? My point is that you have got so good at it by practice that you can do it without thinking about it. The road to your house, you walk, uh, everyone, uh, same school, I have been in the same. Good over time because of practice. Now imagine somebody telling you right from when you have understood language that women are supposed to do something, you are a woman and hence you are supposed to be good at it. Of course I am going to be good at it. I have been taught to cook since I was 5 years old. I have been cooking from 5 to 15. Obviously, I want to be good at it. Is there? There might be a few exceptions. Women are taught not, that you are bad drivers. You are bad drivers. You are bad drivers. You are bad drivers. Women are going to be bad drivers. You do not put effort into teaching them. You do not put any kind of uh, opportunity to let them uh, learn how to drive. Obviously, they are going to be lesser drivers. And the ones that are, they are going to be bad because you keep telling them that. What you tell people, what you tell yourselves, get pro gets propagated over and over and over and over again. And that's what becomes the norm. Agar tu, there's a phrase, right? Agar tu jhoot bhi so baar chilla chilla ke bolo, to finally it becomes the truth. Why does it become the truth? Because you start believing in it. If you believe in something, it becomes the truth. So how many of you all, again, how many of you all think you are feminist? Now that you think that feminism is only about women and men getting equal opportunities. How many of you all think you are feminist? Because you all think men and women should get the same opportunities in life. Most people misinterpret militant feminism as feminism. That's the Yes, problem. so that's the thing. Okay. So over the years what has happened is that feminism has needed uh, to take a militant approach because without you being out there, nothing's going to change. Out there, aggressive, aggressive, in your face. Yes, in your face, aggressive. And but I also have a problem with this because I think that feminism has all become all about hating men. But men are just as equally uh, affected by the stereotypes. Imagine a man. Okay, men in this room. How, uh, when was the last? Uh, have you all? Do you remember crying in the one last year? What? Have you all cried in the one last year? Many times. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Do you think in a group, if I went and asked a man if he had cried, it would be easy to accept the fact that he had cried? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. For him, yeah. Peer wise, no. No. Peer I and him. I I yeah, so it requires a Rex certain Rex. kind of strength <laughs> to accept. And you identify yourself as a feminist, right? Or no? No. 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 I don't know what the book is. It? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's a brilliant, yeah, exactly. I don't know what it is. I have my beliefs, but I do not. I don't know whether I'm a feminist or not. It's fair enough. Feminism is all about the fact that society has dealt each human being a set of cards before they can decide what it is. Even when it comes to uh, your sexuality, <coughs> your gender, you're born with certain chromosomes. You become a male and I become a female. But what if I decide I don't want to be that? Who decides to change it? What is my assigned gender and what is my wanted gender? There are all differences. There are there is there is a difference in whether you're a woman or a man. There's a difference in whether you want to be a heterosexual or a homosexual. All these cards that you've been played before. <laughs> All the cards that you have been dealt before you decided that you wanted to play is what feminism is against. A feminism says that you should get to decide and everything you are 
is because you been taught to think in certain way now the basic point is why is feminism important i work in an extremely feminist organization uh, but that doesn't mean that we hate women uh, hate men i work in a crisis center that deals with domestic violence uh, clients people who are affected or are survivors of domestic violence we do not go around telling every woman you know what your <coughs> husband is at fault you are at fault for making letting your husband do this to you you should leave your husband and that's about it i can't tell a woman who has no means of you know supporting herself has three children that she should leave her husband it's not i work in a, a feminist organization i still can't say that because every woman is different her conditions are different and feminism is recognition of this that a woman is not the only her circumstances it's her what she wants and her circumstances if she wants to still go back to her husband after he beats her up day and day after i still have to respect that how am i different from the entire world of telling her that she should do it you know i'm just telling her the opposite of what everyone is saying but i'm not giving her the opportunity to be what she wants or do what she wants to what do you have to say about you know somebody for example i might believe that wearing a hijab or a niqab is regressive or is it's it's against the basic it's not equal and everything yeah whereas she is educated she still chooses mainly because of social conditioning although yeah okay. so how fair is the choice if it's condition that you know you feel more secure you feel more comfortable so how do you deal with that so do you maybe you know whether it's uh, okay. whether it's really free choice or it's conditioned free choice for example uh, belief in god belief yeah. in yeah sure uh, that's I, a different topic but it's like no, how we let the gen person why you really believe yeah no, so have you given thought is it because you've been brainwashed since birth that this thing or is it actually genuinely free choice I, we don't want like free to choice answer it is not wait all not all not wait let like her answer i Shabbat. think the there is a confusion here uh, in terms of what is choice and what is conditioning there may be any kind of conditioning that leads to a choice but the choice is still choice so choice is to be respected by exactly. i may believe that it is my duty as a woman to stand on my head in a corner for 5 minutes every morning my duty as a woman but if i want to do it i should be allowed to do it that's the choice yeah the, uh, so the, choice choice uh, always is a matter of conditioning conditioning yeah. tells you what uh, choices are yeah. and they yeah. buy you those choices so exactly yes, so, so but, I, uh, I i wasn't through with it yeah. uh, there is also a belief you know that uh, one kind of conditioning is better than another kind of conditioning in my view the peer pressure to wear skimpy clothes is as bad as the social pressure to wear a hijab in my view yeah it's equally yeah but at the same time just the way the woman has the right to wear a spaghetti top and go wherever she wants even if <coughs> even if it is because her friends call it hip whatever the reason for the conditioning is i think it's not all that different for a hijab Yeah, it's this is shallow. That is that is because of pressure. No, I I think shallow and all is it's, it's, it's simply the company we choose. Okay. It's the yeah. company we and have. Also, the company so, we choose. Yeah. So uh, I have a question for you. Yeah. Where do you think the militant feminism stand, stands in all of this? Because uh, I think like I speak for myself and not anybody here, but I think it really alienizes a lot of us. Yeah, exactly are, why we. Like, There's a second part of this. Oh, so if, like, if women and men say that they wanted to be, they want to be treated equally, um, I think there's a start. I mean, treated differently is fine with me. Treated equally is fine, but treated differently, differently is sometimes required. The, uh, there are there are things there are things that I can say in an open conversation with her, with two men that I cannot say in an open conversation with two women. That is your condition. Huh? That's your that is your comfort zone. No, no, one no, second. One second. Wait, no, wait, so wait. my comfort. So no, I can say it, okay, and I can have weird stares in my face. So that is their conditioning too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Akshay, so what I'm ever... asking you, what I'm asking you is that in all of this, where does the militant stand take place? So okay, so militant feminism is all about wanting to make a uh, the woman empowered, so to speak, in a in a way that brings the man down. and the women higher okay and that is something that i do not agree with personally at all i believe that uh, just you know just because the 
equilibrium is like this right now, it doesn't mean that we have to go this way. You know, to come back to this, you have to do that. And uh, I think also the ability to speak in a, uh, this discomfort with saying something to a group where there are women. Uh, it's also about not only your personality, it's also about the personality of the person in front. That, I believe, that yeah, so uh, I also believe that uh, there are a lot of men, especially that I know at Bakam, who would have extreme levels of comfort talking weird things to me because that's the kind of person I am. I will, I will, that. I, I, I've been very frank about it. I will, that's what she said every statement. I can make every statement extremely extremely vulgar but that's about me that's because i have a personality of that and this is something that i do even at home i that's what she said my grandmother who understands it okay so i'm, I'm very serious my 77 year old grandmother actually understands what that's what she says is and actually points me out at times okay so it's all about a personality that you bring to the table uh, what happens a lot of times is that parents teach boys that uh, girls are something that are fragile and I've seen that sometimes in my own house I have a younger brother who's five years younger to me and uh, still when uh, we have to go out uh, we will have relatives tell my brother to take care of me then maybe because he's bigger and this is when we were young also now he is taller he's six feet and he better take care of me and you know beat people up but <laughs> I mean seriously but that's the conditioning I'm giving because I want my own homegrown bodyguard yeah. I mean that, that's just a little selfish of me but um, I'm just saying that that's the kind of conditioning boys get, get, get to boys are also even about showing your emotions about what if a guy okay women are allowed to wear pants what if a man truly wants to wear a skirt it is it will sound weird to most men today but what if you actually have the freedom Imagine, you didn't have to wear constricting clothes. Scotlands do it. People in Scotland don't think it's weird at all. Why? Even in Kerala. Even in Kerala. It's a rapper. See, if I say a do, do it is it is acceptable to everyone. Because you evaluate differently, right? So there is no stigma attached. Exactly, that's the point. That men would wear yes, a mundu. But what if it was a mundu in uh, yellow color with pink flower? It would be a hipster mundu. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a it would be a mundu in Hawaii. So <laughs> it's all about how you look at it. See, you have to realize. So what the point of all of this and to bring your Notice to feminism is one, is that you do, you do not hate feminism because feminism is not about hating men. Do not alienate yourself, alienate yourself from the thought or the school of thought that is called feminism. Second is every notion that you hold about yourself, about the groups that you belong to, uh, about your friends, of how you interact with people, think about it. Think about it and see why am I doing it? Am I doing it because society has asked me to do it or because I really want to do it? And the, if you look at that uh, right now, there are a lot of these apps for safety of women. Yeah. Okay, a lot of them. A lot of initiatives that talk about safety for women. Have you ever questioned those? Have you ever thought, ki, is that actually making me safe? And what about men? Yeah? It's not only women who get raped. It's just because one case became popular. Maybe uh, an app when for men, you know, where they look at a woman and they feel strange things and they can quickly <laughs> SMS five people so that they can distract them. Yeah, what about that? Why not that? You know, why not that? Yeah. You made that app on Android. Really? Yeah, you think? Right <laughs> percent of questions. No. There is an app and I have made it. Oh, wonderful. What does it do? Like a hotel and like a hotel and five people close to a hotel and a panic button. It's like a distress, it's like a panic button. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you're talking about me. Yeah, I am. No, I am. I'm assuming a geotag, right? No, it is a location. I'm working on it. And I'm going to order ticket to another level. But right now it is just sending a SMS. Which has a link, when you click the link, it will... I have serious issues with apps like this. I have serious issues. For one, because it... Okay, this is a little going off track. Because it propagates the fact that rapes happen outside the house. 90% yeah. Well, you could use it inside your house. Yeah, but see... It's yeah, when the child is exactly that. 
No, even the app, I mean, your phone yeah. works no, at home, see, right? The, the thing is, the woman in danger uh, will, but again, data shows that most victims are under the age of 10, who do not have cell phones, who are belong to a so, uh, social, these, these are stats that are by the NCRB uh, data, so I'm, I'm not completely uh, saying that this is the incidence, I'm saying this is the, this is the reported crimes. So most of the crime happens in a lower socio-economic status where phones are only with the male patriarchy, maybe the mother, but definitely not with the children, who I'm saying under 10. Uh, the phones are, um, again, if my father is raping me, if my brother is raping me, do I really have the confidence of calling five people who are unknown? Who do I call in for support? It's always saying that call your father, call your brother. Why not call your mother, yeah? Your mother can protect you too. But it won't. It will always be like, oh, my father and my brother will protect me. Who are the ones who are actually propagating the uh, crime? So you have to question everything that you see around you. Everything that you do has to be questioned with the standpoint of, is society making me do this? If you think, um, yeah. I'll just add something yeah. to that. Not just society, is your personal relationship with someone making you do that? Yeah. Because a lot of times what happens is, even if one person stands up for a cause, Ten other people support the abuser because for some reason they think they have a personal relationship with him and they think, okay, this is a person who might not be able to do something like that. So the person who stands up basically ends up thinking, why did I do this in the first place? Yeah, Yeah. so again, if somebody comes to you and tells you that you're a good friend of yours has Sorry, been abused. I, I have an answer to that. Yeah. Like I, I, was, I was out traveling someplace and I saw this man bashing up a woman. It's pretty bad. When I stepped in, both of them started bashing me up together. Sorry, you have to be a little louder. Mark, I cannot. That was a great way to trivialize the issue by saying that. No, it's not about trivializing. No, I think that it's important. It's not important. See, what happens is again. There is a question that I have for that. Yeah. If the woman does stand up for something like this and 10 other people support her, would we be hitting the same issue here? She's getting beaten up, right? If he's getting beaten up and they support her, that's all. Not the beaten up part, that question. Yeah, so she's saying that the guy was supported, the guy who was beating her. Yeah, what if there are 10 people who have not seen the incident who support the woman in that situation? So I'm saying that you should be very proud of any anyway. So if you're, Why? it's the same, all laws are like that, Why? because Why? there are, no, so 90% of the cases are true, so there will be some, oh, it's, it's collateral damage, live with it. Really? Yes, live with it. Okay, no. Oh, okay. It's collateral damage. You are going to something which is... Wait, one no, second. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. There might be some false cases, so what? That's collateral damage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, we will talk about law later. Why? So how do you really define yeah, yeah. selective feminism? Because the way you define it to me, I couldn't really understand that every woman would have her own conditioning, her own choices she's making, right? So if I today want to have a collective voice of feminism, how exactly do you implement it? Sorry. So a collective voice of feminism, like uh, we say, that every culture or every society will give you a range of choices, which might be limited, which might be ex exhausted. The aim is to make sure that the women that you interact with know all their choices. When I interact, when I counsel women of domestic violence, I make sure that they know all their options. They know the option of going back. See, most women stay in abusive relationships because they don't know that they have a choice to walk out. So when I'm saying that I do feminist counseling, what I do is I give everybody a range of choices. Yes. So, what? Sorry. Yeah. Give, give everyone a range of choices and know, and know your choices. So that's about it. Yeah.